survey, survey shows there's been little progress for Americans who are trying to save for emergencies. Bankrate.com says only 52% of Americans have more emergency savings than credit card debt. You know, interestingly, that number has held steady for the past five years, even though through that time the economy has gone in the tank, come back, gone down. It's been steady. The study also found that one out of five Americans have no credit card debt. Now, those people also have no savings, but at least they have no debt, right? That's, a, that's, that's better than maybe what my generation did, mm -hmm. which was just load up the credit card and deal with it later. What we're really seeing that I found very interesting is that millennials have a different approach to credit. And millennials in this survey, they're talking about people who are 30 years and younger. But Nina, millennials are not ringing up debt, at least of a credit card variety, at the same rate that maybe my generation did. Right, and I think a lot of that, that is surprising to me actually, because when you think about not having a savings and you hear this term living paycheck to paycheck all the time, I think probably a lot of millennials are living that way too, but I think there's a lot of student loan debt that people are dealing with under 30 now, so if you already have a two, three, four hundred dollar payment a month you have to make on that, chances are you're going to live in a little bit of fear of racking up credit card debt as well. Well, Kim, kind of the rip on millennials is that they're just like, you know, flittering about and blowing money on <laughs> drinks and going out, to eat going out every there night. and traveling around the world. Yeah. Sure, all I, true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, it is true, but why, why do you think it is that they're uh, not ringing up debt, at least of a credit card variety? Well, you know, I mean, as you mentioned, their age group, 30 and younger, you know, a lot of them were in school during the recession or were very young and watched their their parents have to deal with the financial obstacles through that, losing a job, losing your savings account, your 401k, a lot sure. of people during that time. And I think it fundamentally changed who they were and their spending habits in the future. I mean, I remember growing up, my grandparents still, uh, decades later, talking about the Great Depression mm -hmm. and how that changed them, their spending habits, well into their 80s. So uh, a, a traumatic event like that. The Great Recession might be doing the same thing. Could be the truth. Kylie, is some of this that millennials are living with mom and dad and they, it's <laughs> a lot easier? I mean, they're living at home until they're 28, 29, 30. You know what, but I think a lot of that comes down to, okay, instead of saying, all right, I'm going to live outside of my means, I'm gonna take a step back, save, a little bit, spend that money where I want to spend it, which is maybe going out with friends, taking these trips, and then staying with mom and dad a little bit longer. I know growing up, it was always said, like, all right, as soon as you turn 18, like, you're out of here. But now my brother, he's living at home with my family because it just makes sense. He's saving a lot of money doing it. And you know what? If a lot of us had that option, I think we would. It is funny. I think my generation looks at it and says, you know what? We sacrificed. We lived in a dumpy apartment. Mm. We didn't travel around the world. Why is it that this younger generation is spending all this money? But the reality is there's different levers, right? And people just pull different levers. We were maybe cheaper with going out, and the millennials are cheaper on housing. They're living at home. I think millennials' parents maybe do a little bit more for them, yeah. if we're being honest. Yeah. <laughs> right, maybe. But is that bad? I don't know. It just is. It just is. It's not bad for me. <laughs>